So what do you do when you need a forklift or a skid steer to do some heavy lifting, but you really don't have skid steer money and you happen to have access to a welder and Facebook marketplace? Welcome to building my custom mobile cherry picker. All right, so you might be asking what the heck does that even mean? Because clearly the cherry picker that I have here behind me that if you guys would have seen in previous videos, I bought off of Facebook marketplace for like $100 and $150. Um, it already does have wheels, so it already is a mobile cherry picker. But what I actually need, because of the fact that I have a one acre property up here in the desert, most of my property is a lot of sand and dirt, and I need to be able to move heavy stuff like my two post lift that I haven't had the time or the money to install yet, and do some things like pulling some posts in the backyard, and overall having some more lifting capabilities than I do with my own hands. So with a little bit of scrap from around my property, I'm gonna turn this cherry picker into something I can slide into a trailer hitch and be able to move and pick up anything I want from anywhere on my property and move it around. And the theme of this video is going to definitely be budget. So if you guys want to copy my design, as long as you have access to a welder and a grinder and especially Facebook marketplace, you should be able to do something similar to what I got here today. So let's just get started. All right. So the main part of this project is going to be the cherry picker itself, of course, this drop hitch that I use normally when I'm trying to move trailers around the property and stuff using my Jeep because the trailer hitch on the Jeep is so much higher than normal. So for starters, we're going to go ahead and remove the actual hitch head section of this drop hitch and figure out the best way to weld some tabs to the back of this thing so we can actually bolt the hitch receiver itself to the back of this cherry picker. So I took a couple measurements of the back tube of this thing and the uh, hitch receiver itself to come up with two tabs that I need to make out of this steel here to be able to weld to the back of that so we can bolt the hitch receiver to the back of the uh, cherry picker itself. So we're going to go ahead and transfer my measurements straight onto this and uh, see if we can come up with something. Should be a pretty simple design. So that terribly drawn L-shaped bracket that I just made probably makes sense to nobody because it hardly makes sense to me, um, but it only needs to make sense to me and hardly is enough on this YouTube channel. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out so I can trace another one and make a duplicate of it. And we're back with two identical enough brackets for the back of this cherry picker. Now all we got to do is drill a couple holes in these things so that when we have them welded to the back of the cherry picker, we'll actually have something to put the bolts through to bolt the hitch to the back of the cherry picker. So I'm gonna go over to the drill press and do that right now. Boom, just like that. Two brackets, two holes, and a trailer hitch, and two bolts. So now what we gotta do is go ahead and assemble this together so we can fit it up to the back of the cherry picker and get it tacked on. Now one thing you always wanna remember whenever putting on brackets that really sandwich anything is that there should always be an extra washer in between because when it welds up a lot of times these brackets will suck together and it'll be impossible to remove and put this back in so if you have that little bit of extra thickness it'll make life a lot easier when you need to take this apart in the future next bracket on in the same orientation all right, so now I'm looking at it, and the washers are too big. They're going to run into each other when they're on the same side like that. So we're actually going to take this back off and install it with the lock washer instead and see if we have enough clearance. Because you see what I did here is I used the two closest holes because I wanted it to be a little bit tighter and compact. And normally when they install these trailer hitches, 
they use two holes that are farther apart from each other. Well, hold up. We're going to go ahead and take a pause right here because I'm starting to realize that at this point of the video, I'm getting tired, I'm getting lazy, and we should go ahead and just skip to the next day because there's some information on the next day that completely voids what you're about to see. So I'll see you there. And just like that, we are back. It is a bright sunny day today. A little hot. We are going to be sweating a little bit today. And I do have to admit something really quick that I did off camera. So here's our hitch. If you'll notice, we have it all bolted together now. And if you'll notice here, We've got an extra hole here. What that is, if you remember, I mentioned that I accidentally drilled the two closest holes together instead of skipping a hole like they normally do with these hitches. I took the extra five seconds off camera here and drilled the correct holes. So now this is gonna add some strength and also give us the ability to remove this thing a lot easier in the future since the bolts are a little bit farther apart. But as you see down in there, I've still got the two washers inside there instead of the lock washers to be able to get that extra space so that this thing is removable in the future instead of being clamped too tight on the hitch itself. Now it should look a little something like that once we get it all welded on. So right now what we have to do is get the grinder out and clean up along all these spots that it's gonna be welded on and get this thing tacked on. Time to melt some wire. Now we got to figure out how to attach this thing here without it having any interference with the cherry picker itself. So I'm going to think up a design really quick on how I want to mount this thing and then be back with you like this. Okay, stop. I'll admit that idea wasn't as good as I thought when I started thinking about it a little bit more. So we're going to throw out the whole jack stand stabilizer situation for now until I've got a better idea. It's mainly just that this electronic jack that I was trying to reuse kind of salvage is going to be more of a hindrance than a benefit to us and I think I'm going to later buy a regular hand crank style jack so that I could do what I want but for right now I want to actually see if this thing does what I want it to do so I'm just going to use the floor jack to be able to lift it up into the back of the truck and let's see if this thing can actually lift some stuff move some stuff around and do what I need to do without further ado let's just give it a shot kids can you spot what the problem is well i can even though clearly i'm not the brightest one in the bunch but don't worry surprisingly enough i actually planned for if this drop hitch was too much of a drop because the great thing about how i designed this is i'm just going to go ahead and flip this thing upside down and we should be able to slide it right in after that and it'll actually be pretty nice because then this thing will sit really high off the ground and I'll be able to pick things up pretty high off the ground without this thing dragging if I go up any hills or anything like that in the backyard. So let's go ahead and unbolt this hitch, flip it over, and try to slide it in. it out it's actually on there it's pretty uh as you would expect pretty solid <laughs> so uh now all that's left is to actually lift some stuff with it 
So I think we'll start light, starting with something in the backyard that she is probably gonna be very excited about. So let's go check out what that is. So this thing at the back of the truck here, we took, or I should say salvaged, from an abandoned Boy Scout camp up above the house. And a uh, little thing you might not know about the camera lady is that she loves archery. So this is a really sick archery target that would usually cost a lot of money if we didn't find it out in the middle of nowhere. And it's been too heavy for us to move it from this spot for probably a year and a half, two years now. And uh, we're gonna try to put this thing on a little stand with our little berm over here so that she could actually practice archery whenever she wants. So the hardest part's gonna be figuring out how to pick it up. So let me go grab the chain. So one thing I'll mention is that hook up there with the cable is my initial plan, but when I was lifting way too much weight with it recently, trying to pick up the Jeep when I was working on it, um, the crank back here, something inside either came apart or broke, I don't want to deal with it right now. Later on, I'll be able to just crank this thing down, pick something up, and move away with it. But for right now, for testing purposes, we're just going to go off of this D-ring loop here with some chain and see what the best way to pick this thing up is. <laughs> it's screaming in pain. The amount of stuff I put this poor Facebook Marketplace engine hoist through, it literally screams when we use it. That's terrible. When we're near this thing picking it up, we're definitely going to want our safety squints on. You know what safety squints are? No. no? It's when you don't have safety glasses on, just but you just eyes. squint your eyes just to, you know, make sure. OSHA's happy with us. Make sure you got your safety squints on. Got them on. So far though. This is awesome. It's working like a charm. All right, I think that's plenty high off the ground. It's gonna clear when we come up the hill, it looks like. So let's go ahead and uh, go grab that pallet. You wanna go grab it? <laughs> Man, I'm finna whip this hoe. I want to mention something about how we're setting up an archery target in our backyard. Don't worry, there's absolutely zero houses this direction. And the way our yard is set up, she will actually be shooting down. And I plan on actually putting a little stand or something to stand on back a little further that she can move around pretty easily so that no matter what, whenever she's shooting, she's always shooting downhill towards the berm. And also we're dealing with a professional here, guys, not a run of the mill you know, girl shooting a bow, right? I am professional. Professional. I think I kick her butt, but. No. <laughs> You're a real desert dog, huh? You just find any shade wherever you can. Nice. All right, we're gonna try to ease her down nice and slow. Try to push it over a little more. There. Ta-da! Great success. We'll try to go yank one of those uh, fence posts out. That'll be a that'll be a real test for this thing because those fence posts, if you saw on my TikTok about a week ago, were a nightmare to remove, and I've still got about two or three of them left over. So let's go see if we can uh, make light work pulling one of those things out with this thing. You know, to be honest. This stupid little project is gonna make my life a thousand times easier. A lot of people might be saying, why don't you just go get a skid steer or a tractor or something like that? The fact of the matter is, here in California, those pieces of equipment, no matter what age they are, are like gold to people. They will sell a non-running, even acknowledging that the motor is blown or something like that tractor from the 50s and try to sell it to you for literally like five ten grand and this was quite literally free i did not put a dollar into this 
other than the fact that I already bought the engine hoist that I bought on Facebook Marketplace for about 150 bucks, but I needed the engine, engine hoist anyways. So the fact that I was able to turn it into something I can use almost every day around my property for practically free is pretty awesome. All right, so as you can see, this pole here has been pretty much useless for a good year, year and a half. And it is concreted in the ground like crazy. The other one that I pulled out over there had about three feet of concrete for a four foot tall chain link fence, which I don't know what the previous owner of this house was thinking, but right now it's just in our way. We can't do any gardening over here when it comes to uh, using the, the tractor quad to be able to get the ground cleared up. And we've been working on this backyard a lot, trying to get it back to a, a usable shape because it was covered in weeds for the last, I would say six months or so. Um, so this getting out of the way is going to be a huge, huge benefit. And this little setup here is literally going to pay for itself at that point. So now I got to figure out how exactly I want to actually tie the chain to this because I don't think these clamps are really going to hold on tight enough to yank this thing from the ground. So what I think I'm going to do is go grab a random bolt I've got and actually put a bolt through it somewhere that I could wrap the chain under to be able to yank it out of the ground. Underneath, underneath this bolt a couple times, back to itself. Same thing, second chain. Would you look at that? Would you just look at it? Would you would you look at that? Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, well. Would you look at that? Yeah, that was about an hour's worth of work done in about five minutes. I think this thing literally just paid for itself. 150 bucks plus some steel and a trailer hitch I already had sitting around. And uh, the truck I already use every day. Very nice. So we're hitting golden hour right now. So we got a little bit of time left. I think the last thing I want to do for this thing to prove its worth, I guess you could say, even though it pretty much already has, is uh, I'm going to clean up this little area right here, set a couple pallets out, and then I want to move at least one of the, uh, the posts for my two post lift. Um, pretty soon here, I do want to install that two post lift, but like everything else, it comes down to money. So for right now, I would like it out of the way so that it's not just collecting dust over there by where we park our cars, potentially door dinging it when we open up our car doors and stuff. So I'm gonna clean this up really quick, get out there, try to hook it up with the lift and um, see if it'll do its job because that's one of the biggest reasons why I built this thing was to be able to actually move stuff around. So we'll be back with you like this. Thinking if we offset the weight just right, it hopefully will not be sketchy. On this channel, that's all we can really hope for, is not sketchy. At least not too sketchy. We're kind of always sketchy, but too sketchy is where things go, go wrong. enough it should sit pretty level what do you do when you need a forklift but you ain't got forklift money this <laughs> that thing is fully off the ground now check it out oh this is gonna make my life so much easier well before the sun runs out which pretty much already has I'm gonna strap this thing up to the back of the engine hoist itself so it can't swing around too much and we're gonna see if we could drop this thing in the backyard. How cool is that?
right, so to finish off this video, we wanna think about, did this actually do what it was supposed to do? Well, it lifted heavy things, it plucked stuff from the earth, and most importantly, costed me zero dollars. So I think overall, this is a win. I'm gonna be using this thing forever until of course, I got that skid steer money coming in from YouTube. So if you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please do leave me a comment, like, subscribe, all the other things, and you guys have a good one.